Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can use adjustment clips in DaVinci Resolve 18 in order to create reusable motions that you can apply to any clip, not just the clip that you originally designed the adjustment clip for. So normally when you animate something like a PNG, you would click on it and then you can edit the properties in the top left in the inspector, and this is of course on the edit page, and you could change something like the zoom, you could change the position, but when you do it this way, all of these settings are attached to this image. But what if you want to apply the same animation to different video clips and you never want to have the problem where the original image or clip that you were using for the animation goes missing so then you lose all of the settings. That's where an adjustment clip comes in. So to find an adjustment clip, we go to the effects window, come down here to toolbox and I'm going to use the search function to search for adjustment. So we'll get this adjustment clip. Let's drag it above our video clip. So the adjustment clip on video track two is going to adjust the clip that is under it on video track one. So you may put some settings on the adjustment clip and other settings on the underlying clip. For instance, maybe the zoom is a setting that I want to control on a image by image basis. Makes sense, right? Because different images, different sizes. So we'll leave the zoom there, but let's reset the position of the wolf by hitting the reset icon on the right and the inspector. Let's click on the adjustment clip. And now with the adjustment clip, we can control the position of the wolf. So if we wanted to have an animation, let's say that the wolf comes up from the bottom of the screen and increases in size. We can put those settings on the adjustment clip and it will affect the wolf. So I'll take the adjustment clip. Let's change the position, adjust it to a negative value where the wolf is off the screen. I'll go to frame zero. I'll keyframe the wolf at that position. Now let's go two seconds into the video and let's change the Y position to zero. So when I type zero and then I hit enter, a second keyframe is created automatically. So now if we go to frame zero and we hit play, our wolf is coming up from the bottom to the middle of the screen. So the settings on the adjustment layer, the animation are separate from the settings on the wolf, but they still affect the wolf. But you can kind of think of the adjustment clip as a multiplier effect. So even if I take the zoom on the wolf underneath and I have it decreased, I can increase the zoom on the adjustment layer and that will interact with whatever the base settings are on the wolf. So if I go to frame zero, I'll keyframe the zoom here. I'll click on the right keyframe arrow on the position to jump to that point in time where the wolf is in the center. And now let's increase the zoom to something like 1.4. So the wolf definitely got bigger with this adjustment clip and the wolf is getting smaller on the underlying clip. So if I move this out of the way, so you can see the wolf as its base layer is still at that reduced size. I can still reset that size to the default of one. And now if I position the adjustment clip on top of it, you, you can see that the wolf is outside of the screen. So the adjustment clip doesn't override the settings on the underlying clip. It's just a second layer of changes that apply to the base clip after you've already made any changes on the base clip. So you can reduce the size and then increase it again, for instance. So let's go to frame zero, hit play. Wolf increases in size. So I'll go to about frame two and a half seconds here. Timeline's in 60 frames per second. So two seconds and 30 frames is two and a half seconds. Uh, and here I'll change the zoom and reset it back to one. So that's a third keyframe. Let's go to the start, hit play. Okay. And there's our simple animation. So the great thing now is that we can take this adjustment clip and apply it to any other clip on the timeline. So if I take this adjustment clip, control C and go over here and paste it in, control V, then we have those same adjustment clip settings over here. So even if we use a different image, like let's grab the apple in here and I hit play, we get the same animation. Now, if we want the apple to be way smaller than the wolf, then let's just shrink the zoom down to a smaller size. So you can see the wolf still bigger the apple smaller, but we have the exact same animation that will apply to the apple that applied to the wolf. Now, unfortunately, there's a problem with power bins right now, where if you try to drag an adjustment clip into the power bin master, you would be able to reuse this same animation, these same adjustment clips across different projects by just going into a different project and you'll find your adjustment clip in the power bin right here. So I could call it something like bottom up. And if we were to go into the power bin in a different project, master and drag, and then drag the adjustment clip onto the timeline, and you would expect to get the same animation. Currently, there's a bug right now, so the adjustment clips aren't actually saving properly to the power bin. Hopefully, they're going to fix that very soon. 
But the idea would be you create the adjustment clip in one project, and if you want to reuse the same animations across your projects, then it would just be a matter of bringing in those adjustment clips for any projects you want to apply the animation to for any image, any clip. So as a workaround for right now, what you could do is select your adjustment clip in one project, control C, switch over to your other project, control V, paste it in. Then I'd come in here where we have the adjustment clip, hit play, and we get the same animation. So hopefully the power bin issue gets fixed in the next update, but you can see the power of adjustment clips being able to reuse your animations across different images and across different timelines in new projects. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching this video to the end, and I will see all of you in my future video content.